Okay, so today we're talking about woodwind instruments in the orchestra. And as you can see, there are quite a few different types depending on the size and the sound. And they come really in three types. Those that have single reeds, double reeds, or no reeds at all. But they fall into four basic categories. And the ones you need to know about are the ranges of the flute, the clarinet, the oboe, and the bassoon. They're the four main ones. And in your cheat sheets is, is all the information that I'm going to go through with you right now. But looking at the flute, the flute starts, lowest note is on middle C and it goes up three octaves. Different notes are obtained by closing and opening the finger holes, which are the bits across the top. And the sound that it makes is a high and brilliant sound. It can be quite haunting as well, um, but there are usually two flutes in an orchestra. So the person who sit, and they sit in pairs. The person who sits on the right is called the, the first flute, and the person that sits on the left is the second flute. And they can only play one note at a time. So if they have a part that has two notes, like a um, a two note chord for example the person on the right plays the high note the person on the left plays the low note now there's links in your cheat sheets for each of these instruments I'm not going to play all of them but I will give you just the first part you can go through and watch the whole video later but I just want to give you an idea of what some of these instruments sounds like so this is a flute Hi I'm Sam Coles I'm the principal flute in the Philomania the flute is a member of the woodwind family and it differs from the other woodwind instruments in that it doesn't have a reed and you make the sound by blowing across this little hole here and lengthening or shortening the tube with your fingers. This is basically a 19th century invention, the flute. Throughout the, the 18th century and up till about 1850 the flute was a conical instrument made of wood but as composers started writing bigger and bigger symphonies and concert halls got bigger and bigger there was a need for more volume and more dexterity in the instrument and Theobald Bohm came up with this idea in the middle of the 19th century of making a cylindrical flute out of metal which gave you much more dexterity you could whiz around much quicker and it was a much more powerful instrument. So that's what he did, and that's what he came up with, and that's what we're still playing today. So you can hear how the low notes are quite full. Well, there's, there is an interesting story about how he came to invent Anyway, I'll let you guys go in and watch the rest of that because we are on a time limit at the moment. So the flute and its smaller cousin, the piccolo, which is the very high version of it, are both C instruments. They don't transpose, they read um, and play and sound in the same key as any other C instrument, for example, a piano. And then we move on to the reed instruments. So there's two types. There's single reed instruments and double reed instruments. So single reed instruments only have clearly, as the name suggests, one reed. And usually there's a flare at the other end of the instrument. So a good example of that is a clarinet. A clarinet has the reed at this end here on the left-hand side, and it flares at the other end to produce a much uh, more mellow nasal sort of sound. There are two main clarinets and you do need to know this. The B-fat clarinet is the one that's used the most often in orchestras and the reason that it's called a B-flat is that it's what's called a transposing instrument. So when a B-flat clarinet plays a C it sounds like a B-flat which means if you're writing for the clarinet in C major and you want it to sound like C major, then you have to write everything up a tone. So a B-fat clarinet will play in D major 
if everyone else is playing in C major so that we're all playing in the same key. Does that make sense? So very quickly, again, you can watch the rest of this video, but this is the clarinet. Um, the clarinet is basically just a cylindrical uh, wooden tube uh, with finger holes so that as I take more fingers off the instrument, uh, the pitch will rise. Like that. And a lot of met metal keys in order to enable me to play all the notes in between those notes, the chromatic notes. And some of that metal work is to enable us to play trills, for example, quite rapidly and efficiently. And so on and so on. So again, I really encourage you to go on and watch each of these videos. They're actually quite interesting. They're not particularly long. Um, at the most, they're 10, 15 minutes long, but they'll give you a lot of really good information about these instruments. A double reed instrument has a very thin cane bound in both sides and it leaves a little opening at the top and it's a very very small opening so you have to have really 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 thin lips and quite a strong lung capacity to push the air through a very small space that's an oboe and you can see how small that reed is and that's a bassoon and that's where the reed is here on the mouthpiece so let's look at each of these one at a time here's our oboe which is a C instrument and doesn't transpose The oboe started life in the Middle Ages as a shawm, a very old instrument, and it developed from the shawm into the first oboe in the Baroque times around 1680, 1690, and was used extensively by Baroque composers such as Handel and Bach. And the Baroque oboe was made of a different kind of wood to the modern oboe, it was made of boxwood and it only had two keys at the bottom of the oboe, a C key and an E flat key, and the rest were just holes. But it had the double reed and it made a fairly similar sound. Uh, following this, the oboe developed into the classical period where Mozart and Haydn wrote for it. Uh, it started adding keys as they went along until it became a lot more developed into the 19th century, early 20th century, and changed to this grenadilla wood that we have now and developed into the modern oboe. Okay, so let's keep going on and have a look at the bassoon, which is sometimes known as the clown of the orchestra because of the sound that it can make. And it's the largest of all the different woodwind instruments. And this is what it sounds like. My name's Amy Harmon and I'm principal bassoon of the Philharmonia Orchestra. The bassoon is a woodwind instrument and you play it by using double reeds, which are so called because it's two pieces of bamboo tied together and when you blow it vibrates. You then attach it onto this metal pipe, which is called a crook, and the air goes in all the way down and up again. It's got a series of holes which are open and closed by pressing keys, which change the pitch. It's got a very large range and you can play very low. And then also very high. And then everything in between. That gives you an idea of um, its particular sounds. So what you guys need to know for this particular grade is for each of these instruments it tells you what the lowest and highest note is. 
you do need to know the answer to the, each of these. You also need to know whether the instrument is a transposing instrument or what's called a concert pitch. And all of that information is in your, your uh, cheat sheets. Now the other thing you need to know is how to actually play that instrument and how they produce articulations. So in some instruments they use the tongue to go da 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 and in other instruments it's la 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 or ta 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 or ga ga ga. So using different vocalizations and using your mouth and your tongue in different ways in your palate is what helps you to actually produce the sound. So you can read through a lot more of that detailed information in the cheat sheets, but if you watch the videos, they'll also explain and um, give you samples of what they sound like. So that's what all of this stuff is about. And the reason that we're doing that is because the this is the sort of question that you'd be asked. So which of the woodwind instruments would be expected to play the music on each of these staves. And you can see straight away that we've got three that have um, the same key sign and one that doesn't. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing because some students are thinking, what? What key are you in and which, which is which? Well, the way that you can tell is by knowing that the flute, the oboe, and the bassoon are not transposing instruments. So the flute will always be playing in the treble clef, the oboe will always play in the treble clef, the bassoon will usually play in the bass clef but can use the alto and even the tenor clef if it moves high enough because it's got such a big range. The clarinet is the dead giveaway here. So how do we know what we're in? Well, if everyone else is playing in B-flat major and the clarinet is playing a tone higher than everyone else, like in C major, then that must be a B-flat clarinet because it's always written a tone higher. Whereas if it's a clarinet in A, it's going to be even higher again because it's a much bigger gap. It'll be from a B-flat up to a D-flat, a minor third. Does that make sense? So, another type of question you would get would be to draw the clef that these instruments would use. Well, the flute, the oboe and the clarinet are pretty easy because they're the ones that all use the treble clef. But the bassoon, as I mentioned, uses not only the bass clef, but the tenor clef as well. So you may need to do some practice. I know all of you can draw a treble and a bass clef, but you may need to uh, fiddle around with a uh, tenor clef. Now, quick reminder about what a tenor clef means. The pointy bit here in the center tells you where middle C is. So in the tenor clef, middle C sits on the second top line. Whereas in the treble clef, middle C sits below. And in the bass clef, middle C sits above. There is one other type of clef known as the alto clef, which we talked about in a previous grade. The viola plays the alto clef and it looks a lot like the tenor. The only difference is the pointy bit the whole thing is down on the middle line, which is where middle C sits. So, the sorts of questions that you're going to be asked are which woodwind, woodwind instruments are transposing, and then describe the tone of each of those instruments. So, for example, an oboe is very, very nasal, and a clarinet sounds very hollow. They're the sorts of words that they're looking for. And all of those answers are in your cheat sheets. So I'm not going to go through each of these answers because they're pretty straightforward once you've watched all those videos. But what I would like you to do this week is to work through lesson nine. And then I'm going to go through with some of these extra questions. So before I move on, does anyone have any questions? <laughs>